Hello and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. This is week 3, segment 4. In our previous video segment, we saw a lot of examples of creating files, changing their ownership, changing their permissions, and how that affects who can access them. In this segment, we we'll focus on the system calls that are used to implement the commands we used in the previous segment. In particular, in our previous command examples, we've seen many calls to the chmod command, so it comes as no surprise that this command is implemented via the chmod family of system calls. Likewise, it should be no surprise that the call comes in the same familiar flavors as before. chmod to act on the file and indirect through symlinks, lchmod to act on the symlink itself, fchmod to act on a file descriptor, and fchmod add to handle relative path names, all as usual. Changing the permissions on the file requires that you are either EUID 0, root can do whatever they want, or your EUID matches the STUID of the file. The permissions you are able to set are those we've already seen, as well as a few additional ones. The one outlier we've not discussed yet is the so-called sticky bit, aka save text bit. We'll get back to the details of the sticky bit in a future lecture. Nowadays it is primarily of interest if set on directories, but more on that another time. Here, let's see what calling chmod looks like in practice. In this program, we will perform manipulation of existing permissions as well as setting permissions to an absolute value. To update the existing permissions, we first have to get them, so we call stat. Then we turn on or off the relevant bits in the stmode bit mask. Setting bits to an absolute value does not require us to consider the existing ST mode, so we can just go ahead and call schmod here. Okay, let's run it. First, we create file and file1. Here they are. Now we run our program and we see that we successfully turned off the user read bit and enabled the set git bit. Likewise, we set the octal 0644 mode as promised. By the way, note that the s for the set git bit here is a capital S. This is because our file is missing the group execute bit, so ls is kind enough to show us this difference. Here, yeah, let's fix it. There, that looks more normal, doesn't it? Okay, now let's look at the syscall required to change ownership of a file. Look familiar? Same family as before. Consistency is a virtue. Okay. So changing a file's owner is clearly something that can impact the security of the system, and on most systems this action requires EUID 0. Now POSIX does allow users to change files they currently own to another user, which was influenced by early System 5 versions, but by and large you should find that the underscore POSIX chown restricted constant is defined on most systems, and shoning files requires root privileges. Changing the group ownership, however, is something that non-root users can do, if you are the owner of the file and the group you're showing the file to is either your primary or one of your supplementary groups. We saw this a little bit ago when Jay Sharma was able to change the group ownership of a file to real or users in our previous segment. Here's our obligatory code example. First, we try to show a file to ourselves. This isn't really useful, since either you are the owner and it'll work, or you're not and it won't. Unless, of course, you're root. Passing negative 1 as the group ID means that we won't change the git when calling shown. Next, we try to change the file ownership to Fred and leave the group as is followed by an attempt to change the group to users, and finally an attempt to change the group to TTY. Let's give it a try. Here's a file 
owned by Jay Schaumer and Group Wheel. Of course, we were able to join the file owned by Jay Schaumer to Jay Schaumer when we run the program, right? Yay! Joining it to Fred, however, UID 1001 didn't work. Then changing the group ownership to users succeeded again, but trying to change it to TTY failed. LSL shows the new ownership. Trying to join a file we don't own, such as Etsy password, is going to fail on all accounts. We'll try anyway. Okay. What if we were root though? Well, no surprise here. Root can do whatever they want, we said, so all the charm calls succeed, and our file is now owned by Fred with group TTY. Ok, to recap, Chmart and Chown consistently follow the semantics of the other calls we've seen. That is, we have different flavors allowing operation on the file, on the symlink, on a file descriptor, and atomically safe on a relative path. You don't get a whole lot of surprises here, Unix is nice that way. Next, only root and the owner of a file can change its permissions, which makes sense. Only root can change the owner of a file, but the owner may change the group ownership of a file, including to one of the supplementary groups. Technically, some systems may allow users to join their own files to another user, but in practice you are unlikely to encounter this. For whatever it's worth, I have not seen a Unix system that allows this in the last 20 years. Changing file permissions and ownerships has significant security implications, so always be careful about what kind of access you grant. In our next video segment, we'll take a look at the default ownership and permissions given to newly created files. See you then, and thanks for watching. Cheers!